What's up YouTube? So in this video I'm going to be doing a tier ranking list of uh, NFL quarterbacks. Um, this is just going to be based on my opinion on uh, some of these players. I'm going to go over of course elite. There's only going to be a couple of those. That's the very best. Borderline is people that are just under that might become elite. Maybe they used to be elite but I don't think they are anymore. Above average, average, below average. You get you get that. But unknown, unknown is going to be more, I don't know what their future, I, I don't know what the, um, what their futures hold. And one thing I do want to point out too, I'm not going to be talking about these players as far as how their career has been. I'm talking about them as they are right now. So just keep that in mind. And I'm also going to be working from um, from below average to elite. I'm going to work from the bottom up. Okay, so now to start looking for below average quarterbacks. Also, my opinion on these players may change. and Because uh, most likely their talent levels will change. They'll either progress, they might get worse, they might, you know, just with age, you, you never know. So, I'm just going to go ahead and start. So, below average, first off, Josh Allen. Um, my opinion on this guy might change, but right now, I just think... I mean, obviously, he's got a cannon. I think Matthew Stafford is probably the only quarterback with a stronger arm than him in this in the league. But I just think his accuracy is seriously in question. And Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Um, not too big on him. He might change my mind eventually, but that's where I've got him right now. Let's see. Uh, no. Jameis Winston? Yeah. Jameis Winston's, I, I would say, is below average. Um, with him, the biggest problem is he's not that accurate, especially on a consistent basis. And he has a really bad habit of trying to force plays when they're not there. So I definitely say he is below average. Um, let's see. No, not Dak. Sam Darnold. Um, we'll come back to him maybe. Eli Manning at this point in his career. Yeah, I would say he's below average. I think his arm has deteriorated significantly. Um, he's not as accurate as he used to be. He, he's just not the same guy. Um, I always thought he was a tad bit overrated. People were always calling him elite. I would, I'd say he was above average, maybe borderline elite, like in his prime, but that's about it for me. Um, so yeah, let's move on. Ren Fitzpatrick. Hmm. That's actually kind of tough for me. Thinking between below average or average. Uh, I'm going to say below average. The thing with Ryan Fitzpatrick is he shows flashes of being absolute trash and actually looking like a competent quarterback. Uh, he, he's just wildly inconsistent. So I'm going to rank him as below average because of that. But he does have the, the ability to play up. I just want to state that. Um, he can even look above average or borderline elite sometimes. Uh, when he's at his best, but it's just rare and inconsistent when he actually gets to that point. So, yeah. Joe Flacco, I would say, is below average at this point. Um, earlier in his career, I'd probably rank him as, as above average, but his he just deteriorated a lot. His accuracy was never great to begin with, but it's only gotten worse, in my opinion. Um... Yeah, I, I just think he's below average and uh, probably one of the most overpaid quarterbacks in NFL history. But, you know, but to be fair, the Ravens did have to overpay him a little bit because, you know, when you win the Super Bowl MVP, or was he Super Bowl MVP? I know he won the Super Bowl. It might have been Ray Lewis that was Super Bowl MVP. I don't remember. But when you win the Super Bowl um, on your – contract year and let's be honest he did ball out that year in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl he absolutely did 
So he did earn the paycheck. He just didn't live up to those expectations. That's all. Uh, Case Keenum, yeah, below average. I was never, um, I was never buying the fact that people were saying he was really good. He did have the one good year in Minnesota, but I think that was more based on how good the team was around him. At the time, they had a pretty good offensive line. They had a top tier defense, deadly receiving core. Yeah, I'm not saying he's trash. I'm not saying any of these guys are trash. But they are below average, in my opinion. Um, Mark Jackson. Might come back to him. I don't know. Uh, Mariota, no. Trubisky, no. Dalton, no. Josh Rosen, yeah. I'd say he's below average. Um, even in college, I wasn't a big fan of him. And I am a Dolphins fan. And I'm still not a big fan of him. I got both our quarterbacks on the below average tier, unfortunately. Um, I think Rosen has shown flashes of accuracy, but he has a big problem with panicking under pressure, which is going to be a problem considering the Dolphins' offensive line is pretty shit, to be honest. So, yeah, I think he's below average. Uh, Tannehill, yeah, I'd say he's below average as well. Um he was probably a good example of an average quarterback early in his career, but the injuries have really added up, and it's just it's kind of sad at this point. Um, so yeah, out of the rookies, the only one I'm going to put as below average is Daniel Jones. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Daniel Jones. I think his arm strength is questionable, and that's not. The only thing I go that goes into a good quarterback for me. Arm strength is not even one of the top things for me. But his accuracy is questionable. And he makes some really, really stupid decisions sometimes. Like even just watching the film in college. It was atrocious. Uh, he might change my opinion on him. But right now, that's my opinion. Okay. So now we're getting in. I'm going to be getting into the unknown. Alex Smith. I think he, in his prime, is the example. Is a good example of average, maybe above average. Um, but right now, he's got that injury in his leg, so we don't know what his future holds. We don't know if he's ever even going to play again. So, that's unknown for me. He's most likely not going to play this year anyway. So, yeah. Um, Baker Mayfield, I'm going to also put an unknown. Um... He got really hot at the end of last year. He was looking really good. The Browns are looking like a much more explosive team this season. But um, I just want to see him start a full season. And, yeah, I, I, I just want to see a little bit more from first. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll put him in average for now, actually. I will put him in average, actually. Uh, that might change. One way or the other, but right now I'm going to put him an average. Um, I'm still on unknown, by the way. Uh, yeah, Sam Darnold. Yeah. Um, I I liked Sam Darnold in college. Uh, he's pretty accurate, got decent arm strength, but he is a gunslinger and he does make questionable decisions at times. But I am curious to see what he can do now that he's got Le'Veon Bell. Although the Jets are talking about trading Le'Veon Bell. So uh, the Jets are kind of a, of a nightmare right now. Um, but overall, I, I want to see what he can do in his sophomore season. He didn't do that great in his, uh, his senior season. I mean his uh, first season. But I'm hoping he can do a little bit better. Um, so, yeah. Unknown. Hmm. Nick Foles actually might be a candidate here. I might come back to him. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. That that that's a that's a big unknown for me, because he did show flashes. Uh, we haven't seen him play a whole lot. Uh, he played a few games in New England and looked good. And he did play uh, what was it six games, uh, for the for the Forty ers and he looked great in all those. Um, but 
I just want to see him play a full season first before I can make a true decision on him. Uh, the 49ers offense isn't really looking that scary to me right now. So he doesn't have the best weapons. Their defense isn't really that special either. So, hey. I still need to see a little bit more from him. Uh, Lamar Jackson, yeah. Uh, obviously, his mobility is insane. Um, he's got good arm strength. His accuracy is questionable, and his decision-making is also questionable. But I'm just curious what the Ra- what he's going to look like as a f- after a full year of being the Ravens' starter. The, the Ravens being able to build their offense around him um, and create a playbook just for him and his abilities instead of having to come up with two playbooks because him and Joe Flacco are such different players. Um, so it's still an unknown to me. I want to see what he can do before I really make my decision on him one way or the other. Um... Carson Wentz. Yeah, uh, I'm curious to see how he's going to look like when he comes back healthy this year. Um, the little bit of games he did play last year, he wasn't looking that good, but at the same time, he wasn't completely healthy yet anyway. So I, I think the Eagles rushed him out a little bit too soon, especially when they did have someone like Nick Foles. So, uh, yeah, I, I am definitely very curious to see with that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put all three of the rest of the rookie quarterbacks up here on Unknown. Um, Dwayne Haskins. I think I've, I I made a video on Dwayne Haskins. I'm not a big fan of him. Uh, I don't really like his accuracy outside the numbers because he doesn't have any accuracy outside the numbers. Um, but if you want to do like a West Coast type of thing, you know, short passes, stuff like that, then that's fine. You, you can do that. I, I just want to see what he's going to be like in the NFL before I can judge. Right now, I'm kind of leaning toward below average. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put him there, actually. Yeah. The more I started talking about it, the less I wanted him in unknown. Right now, he is below average, but it might change. Uh, Kyler Murray, very short, but I think out of all the rookies in this class, I think he has the most raw talent, not just in... Um, not just his mobility. I think his arm strength and accuracy is also the best. Uh, Drew Locke. Um, he's got good arm strength and he's shown flashes of accuracy. But uh, his his decision making is pretty questionable. Um, I kind of want I kind of want him to sit for a little bit. I might even start Joe Flacco over him this year. To be honest, let him learn in a system, but at the same time, I think John Elway is probably thinking he needs to win right now to save his job, so, yeah. Alright, so at this point, I'm going to move on to the average players. So, going back up to the top, yeah, Derek Carr. Uh, this might change, but um, I don't think it will. I think he is one of those quarterbacks that really screams average to me. Um... His arm strength is pretty solid. His accuracy is questionable. Decision making is questionable. And overall, the Raiders. I mean, yeah, they added Antonio Brown, but overall, I'm not really liking their offense right now. Um, their offensive line is very questionable, in my opinion. Uh, Josh Jacobs will be a decent running back for them. Uh, he's not very well rounded. He's kind of just a power back. I made a video on him if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah. I think he's average. That might he might change my opinion on him. He might even be a candidate for unknown, but I'm gonna put him in average, kind of like I am with Baker Mayfield. Uh, Kirk Cousins. I think uh, him and one other player. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put him there because I think they're kind of the same person. Uh, Kirk Cousins and Andy Dalton are kind of the same quarterback to me. I think they both have average arm strength, average accuracy, average decision making. I think they're both the epitome of what an average quarterback looks like. Uh, they're not great by any means. They're okay at best. Um, yeah, that's all I really have to say. And um, 
I'm also going to change my stance. I said earlier that Joe Flacco is the most overpaid quarterback ever. I changed my mind. That's Kirk Cousins. He's the first quarterback or first NFL player to get a fully guaranteed contract, and he is an average quarterback at best. So, yeah, that's overpaid for sure. Um, yeah, Dak Prescott. I think he's he's pretty average as well. Um, I think his accuracy and arm strength are decent enough. They'll get the job done. Decision-making is very questionable. Um, but the thing is, Dallas, as, as far as the, their ability to win, he doesn't need to be that great. He doesn't need to be a great quarterback for them to win. Uh, they've they've got a good running game. They've got good receivers. They got a solid defense. So, really, he just needs to be able to move the chains, and he he's decent at that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm actually gonna put Nick Foles there. I know a lot of people hype him up a lot, but uh, I I do think he's average in my opinion. Um, because he's done pretty good with Philly. The outside of Philly, he's been pretty terrible, to be honest. Uh, he's either been a backup or was just straight up trash when he actually did get playing time, as was with the Rams. But um, this might change, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of the Jaguars' offense, so I kind of don't see that happening. Uh, I think their receiving core is pretty terrible. Uh, Leonard Fournette has a lot of questions as far as his health uh their offensive line is pretty bad so yeah it's, it, it's gonna be a tough road for him let's see uh trubisky yeah i'm gonna put it trubisky in in the average tier um he might change but right now he just hasn't shown anything to be above average at this point i'm hoping that changes i think it probably will but right now i can't justify putting him any higher I'm also going to put uh, Mariota there. Um, I think he had the potential to be better than he is, but he just has been so sidelined by injuries and kind of like Tannehill. But, I mean, Mariota does have more talent than Tannehill. But, unfortunately, I don't think he's ever going to reach the potential he should have because the injuries have just really stacked up, and he's just not the player he used to be, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, Deshaun Watson. This is another guy that gets hyped up a little bit, in my opinion. Um, Deshaun Watson, he's mobile. Got, um, decent arm strength. Okay accuracy, but the, my problem with him is his decision-making is kind of so-so sometimes. Um. You know, his rookie year when he exploded, you know, teams weren't really, didn't really know how to play against him. If you go back and watch the film, his wide receivers were pretty much wide open most of the time. So I think his rookie season, he got overrated. And I think he kind of got exposed a little bit last year. Um, decent quarterback, and I think he might progress. But as of right now, this is where he is. My opinion will probably change for the better for him eventually. Um... And also, I just want to point out, because I'm going to be moving to uh, Stafford, damn it. But See, this is where it gets tough, because if I could do it, it this is kind of what I would do with Stafford. I would put him like halfway, because I think he's just between average and above average. But uh, I'm going to put him in average, but just know I think he is better than the other quarterbacks on this list. You know, I'm going to put him in above. Just not as above as some of these other guys. Eh. Maybe. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, I think Stafford has the strongest arm in the game. I think he's got um, decent accuracy. But his decision-making is questionable. But to be fair, his offensive line is kind of mediocre. And their weapons have been pretty so-so his whole career. I mean, yes, he had Calvin Johnson. Um, earlier on in his career, but there wasn't too much outside of him, unfortunately. Um, he's shown that he can be a very good quarterback at times, but it's just really inconsistent. Um, yeah. So let me go ahead and move on here. I'm going to put Cam Newton 
up on this list. Uh, obviously very, very mobile, but, um, and he's had moments where he looked like borderline elite, but I think the injuries are kind of giving me questions about him. We don't even know how much he's going to play this season. Uh, he most likely won't be there to start the season out, so I, I don't know. Uh, and his decision-making and accuracy is pretty questionable at times. He also has one of the strongest arms in the game, in my opinion, but... Yeah, he's just above average for me. Jared Goff as well. Um, now, obviously, the Rams are a very good team. Uh, and I think that's why he's had so much success. I mean, they've had they have Todd Gurley. They have a... Their receiving core isn't, like, amazing, but with the running game that they have and the offensive line they have, their receiving core is pretty damn good. And their defense is solid as well. Um, I don't think he's on the borderline elite status. I don't think his, his film really shows me that at, at this point. Uh, I just don't. Um... So yeah, I'm gonna get. I'm just gonna go ahead and move on. Matt Ryan, I think, is on this list as well. Um, although to be fair, I think he is better than the three uh, to his left. Um, for me, him and the Falcons are both just too inconsistent. He, again, he he's looked really good uh, at times, but it's just too inconsistent for me to consider him elite or even borderline elite. So above average is where is the only place I can really put him right now. Um, I might come back to above average, but right now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to borderline elite because there's some guys that are like questions for me that are left. Um, Ben Roethlisberger, I would have put him in elite. If I was going off career. But I think he did deteriorate a little bit last year. Now my opinion on this might change. I mean the Steelers had so much drama going on last year. Between Antonio Brown. Le'Veon Bell. They just had so much drama. So maybe. You know with fresher minds. It might he, he might start playing a little bit better. But watching the film last year. His accuracy really deteriorated. His arm strength didn't see didn't seem to be as as uh, powerful as it once was, and he's getting older, so I mean, it only makes sense. Um, so yeah, Philip Rivers, I think, is another guy. I think he's been on the borderline elite status pretty much his entire career, but never really exceeded that. He's a very solid quarterback, has possibly the best anticipation in the league, but uh, yeah, he, he just... Can't ever do it consistently enough to be considered elite, in my opinion. Uh, Andrew Luck, another one. Um, injuries have really sidelined his career, but I still think he is a an amazing quarterback. Um, his accuracy, arm strength, it, it, it's his anticipation. It's all so top tier. It's just. The injuries have really derailed him, and sometimes his decision making, because he is a bit of a gunslinger, it does um, does get in his way a few a little bit. He throws more interceptions than he should, but I do think he is still an amazing quarterback. Russell Wilson, um, I think this guy is probably uh, so far the closest out of my borderline elite to being elite. Um, for me, there are only three elite quarterbacks for sure in the NFL to me right now. But I think, uh, I think this guy is damn close. Um, he's really put away all the doubts I used to have about him when he was, uh, after he won that first Super Bowl. Because I know people were already calling him elite and, uh, saying how great he was, but, my questions were, what was he going to look like after that defense went away, after he didn't have Marshawn Lynch anymore? But he's answered that, and he's still an amazing quarterback. So, um, yeah. I think he's on the borderline elite status. And I think he will end up being elite at some point in his career, but just not right now. Um, Patrick Mahomes. I know a lot of people are probably going to want to put him on the elite status, but... Uh, I'm just not willing to do that right now. He's only started one season, and I want to see 
him play a little bit longer before I can actually put him on that elite status. Um, Ma- I'd say Mahomes and maybe Luck for me are like in between borderline elite and above average. I think Mahomes is better than most of these guys. Well, potentially. But I, I just want to see him play at the level he did last year at a more consistent basis. That's all. Okay, so now we're getting into the elite status. Drew Brees. This man has been one of the most consistent quarterbacks, in my opinion, of all time. His tenure with the Saints. I mean, how many years? I mean, I told you I wasn't going to go over career, but how many years did he have 5,000 yard seasons in a row? That I'm not counting that, but I'm just saying. And last year, he was still absolutely amazing. His arm strength, his accuracy, his anticipation. It's just top tier. It just is. Everything about him screams elite. I mean, seriously. And I know people aren't going to like this, but Aaron Rodgers as well. Um, I know some people are saying he's not elite. Some people are saying he was never elite. If you're honestly saying that Aaron Rodgers has never been elite, then you're just just no. You shouldn't be talking about football. And yes, even on the four-letter network, that is ESPN. Most of them don't know what they're talking about either. But hey, whatever. I might even make a video about uh, ES- my thoughts on ESPN and NFL Network. All those. Yeah. I'll probably make a video on that one day. But anyway, Aaron Rodgers. Um, yeah, I still think his arm strength, his accuracy, everything is just screaming. It still screams elite. And one thing you have to keep in mind is Aaron Rodgers was injured all season last year. So... Plus, the Packers are terrible. I legitimately think if they didn't have Aaron Rodgers last year, I think they might have gone winless. They might have gone 0-16 without Aaron Rodgers last year. And I, I, I'm i being serious when I say that. I think the Packers, without Aaron Rodgers, are the worst team in football. They cannot draft. They haven't built a team. They didn't build a team around Favre. I mean, there's a reason why Rodgers and Favre only got one Super Bowl each because the Packers can't draft. They don't go after free agents. Yeah. Yeah. Might make a video on that, too. Anyway. And obviously, Tom Brady. I know some people are going to say that Tom Brady is not elite. People are going to call him overrated. Look, I'm a Dolphins fan. I hate Tom Brady as much as all of you. I've seen him kick our team's ass twice a year for last two decades just about but at the same time he's got six super bowls he's got he he is the most accurate quarterback in the nfl he is he doesn't necessarily have the best arm strength he doesn't but his anticipation his preparation i mean his accuracy it's 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 it is elite it, it he's I don't know if I'm willing to say he is the best quarterback of all time. I don't know if I subscribe to that necessarily, but he is definitely in the consideration, and he is still elite in my opinion. Um, and honestly, if you don't think so, I think you're being blinded by hatred at this point. And th- that's just a fact in my in, in my eyes. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to hold you guys too much longer. I'm going to uh, go ahead and wrap this up. If you guys uh, like this video, I would appreciate you hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comments down below. And I'll see you next time.